porch. I'm so glad to have you with us today. Um, my grandson, Jacob, came by today to help me with some hard jobs, lifting, cleaning out, that sort of thing. So I wanted to make him a special soup. It's a cold day and I made my golden potato soup. Now this recipe is in our cooking group, Cooking from Scratch on Debbie's Back Porch on Facebook. And you can join and get it there. And here are the ingredients. So you might want to pause and write them down. And hey, if you like our videos, if you like what we do, a thumbs up is appreciated. And please subscribe. Thanks. Now let's get cooking. The golden potato soup is named that because the ingredients give it a golden hue. And it's got a little more in it than your normal potato soup. I'm starting with a half pound of sausage and I'm going to crumble it as I go. I'm cooking this in my cast iron Dutch oven. Uh, and by the way, Jacob is receiving his commission in the spring. He'll be going to Fort Leonard Wood as a second lieutenant. And he made the Dean's List. We're all very, very proud of him. So I'm going to uh, stir this sausage up, get it into fairly small pieces, and brown it nicely. And much of the sausage that you buy in the store has no fat, not even enough to brown the meat. So I'm going to add a little oil. And I'll, I may take the oil out later, um, and I'll show you that when I get to it. But for now, I need just a little bit to brown the sausage. And we don't have to cook this totally done because it's going to cook for quite a while. But we do want to get a little browning. And, you know, you've heard me say this before if you've watched any of my videos. Browning's not just about color. It's about flavor. So now I'm going to add the mirepoix, the onions, celery, and carrots. And I've chopped these fairly small. Uh, they have plenty of time to get done, but I, I, I want them fairly small. And we're going to cook these until they're translucent. And this is the time you add your salt and pepper. The salt helps the vegetables soften and, and sweat. And I'm using some red pepper flakes, which I often do. You can use black pepper if you prefer, but I really love the flavor. And just the tiny little bit of bite from red pepper flakes. And then I'm going to add the cumin. And cumin is part of what gives it the golden color, but it's not the major part. And I'm going to add just a little bit of turmeric, too. I love the color of turmeric. Turmeric doesn't bring a lot of taste, but it enhances any other spices you use. And it gives a lovely color to what you're cooking. So um, I also understand that it's very good for you. My doctor said, add more turmeric to your diet. And I said, sure, because I already use a lot. Uh, I put it in lots of things. So you see that soaking up most of that oil and we need enough to brown the vegetables a little bit. So I'm going to add some more and don't worry, I, I will scoop a lot of this oil out. But you've got to have enough to cook the veggies and meat. And now the potatoes. I've cut these in, you know, medium to small chunks and I'm going to let them brown in the spices uh, and the uh, flavor from the mirepoix. There is a subtle difference in the flavor if you let the potatoes brown just a little bit and soak up all that juice and flavor from the mirepoix than if you just put them in the liquid. And you know, that's something you can try with almost any kind of soup that you make. Uh, browning and searing the vegetables before you add the liquid makes a difference. Uh, it really adds some flavor. So I guess I'm going to have to fire my camera person. She failed to get the shot where I added the two tablespoons full of flour. Uh, that's not enough flour to thicken this. This is not a thick soup. It's just some flour to uh, emulsify with the uh, fat that I've added. So here is a quart of chicken broth. And we're going to let this simmer with the chicken broth, oh, probably about 20, 25 minutes to make sure everything's done. And after that, we're going to check these potatoes to make sure they're good and soft because, you know, nobody likes a raw potato in their soup. And these are good and done, and we're ready to take our next step. 
Now I have this at a simmer and that extra fat, extra oil that I know was driving you crazy, um, but we needed it to brown the vegetables and it's um, accumulating around the sides and I'm going to take a ladle and ladle off most of it, not all of it. Uh, and you, you see this when I make gumbo, the last step before you add the dairy or before you add your last ingredients is to uh, siphon off, ladle off any extra fat. And you know, if you use butter instead of oil, you have less of it to ladle off because of the milk solids. But I was low on butter, so I used vegetable oil. You can use either one. Now I'm going to add a quart of whole milk. And don't skip on this. Don't use 2%. Add whole milk or half and half because that's where a lot of the richness comes from. So I've left this on a low simmer and we're going to bring it back up to heat. We don't want to boil this. We just want to bring it up to uh, a simmer. Once you've added the dairy, you don't want to boil it. So when it comes to a simmer, I'm going to add the last ingredient, which is a cup of brewed coffee. And don't turn your nose up. Yes, adding a cup of coffee makes it wonderful. Use decaf if you need to. Bring this back up to a simmer, and then we're going to feed Jacob for all of his hard work. Talk about the soup or whatever. Well, I don't know anything about soup or <laughs> how to talk about it, but it's fantastic. And I'm going to sit here and eat it all. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for joining Jacob and me for our golden potato soup. I hope you try this recipe. It's really yummy and perfect for a cold winter day. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. Hope to see you again tomorrow.